Hey, what is up internet? Kyle here, Slapshot Toys, doing a little tour video today. Uh, I've had this channel up for about, I don't know, a year and a half, two years now, and I'm just now getting around to really truly setting up my collection, and I kind of wanted to show it off just a little bit. So this is my first ever collection video tour of my little hockey slash man cave. Now first up, I am a massive hockey fan. I know this probably isn't going to interest most of you, but I do have a ton of Columbus Blue Jacket gear. Uh, they are my team, as you can see here. Uh, that was actually done by a family friend. Uh, he's kind of an artist, does a lot of like home or handmade furniture and things like that. And he actually made that specifically for me. That is absolutely awesome. Uh, I have some signed photos there. And then from the first ever game at Nationwide Arena, there's just a couple old hockey sticks I have. Uh, my puck collection. Hey, I'm also a big Miami University Red Hawk hockey fan. I believe this was signed by the entire 2013-2014 team. Uh, so actually a couple NHL players like uh, Austin Zarnick and this was Riley Barber. Uh, he plays for Washington Capitals now. Uh, so yeah, some NHL players on there. Just some random pucks and stuff. I used to coach uh, kids hockey and it's kind of hard to see now, but probably, about, this is probably 10 years old now. Uh, but that was all the kids that were on my team they signed. Me and the other coach, they sign sticks for us and still have that. That's awesome. And then this puck actually is a game use puck that I got. Uh, I was sitting right behind the bench, the visitor's bench up at Nationwide Arena. Uh, the puck was shot into the crowd and David Abisher, uh, the backup goalie for, I believe it was the Canadians at the time, uh, just turned around and handed it to me. I was sitting right next to him, like by the runway where they come out. So that was really cool. Uh, some other, just a signed jersey. Uh, but yeah, let's get to the stuff you guys actually care about. First and foremost, we will start with Hot Toys. And starting right here, we have the Netflix Daredevil. This is one of my more recent Hot Toys. I think I just got them probably about a month or so ago. Really like this figure. Uh, kind of messing with him. I feel he's a bit fragile and I think the suit kind of is prone to creasing and things like that. Uh, and his posability is a little bit limited with kind of how tight the suit is. But overall, an awesome figure. Really like this kind of pose that I have, just kind of him standing over the cityscape. And I really like that base set. Kind of has that little background with the gutter and the broken pipes and everything. So that is the Netflix Daredevil. Coming down here, we actually have the Netflix Punisher. Uh, I actually just reposed him this afternoon. Uh, and this is actually the grenade launcher from my Batman v Superman Batman figure. But I just thought it looked really, really cool in Punisher's hands. And I thought this was a pretty Punisher-esque pose. And then there is the Daredevil helmet there at the bottom uh, that came with this figure. And then this still really bothers me. I don't know why in the world they couldn't... Why, I don't know why they didn't give us a Punisher stand. I mean, it could be the exact same stand as a different one. Just put, just put a Punisher plaque. That really bothers me. Uh, so yeah, I may buy a custom one just to have a Punisher stand. Or since the Netflix show is really, really good, uh, maybe they'll do another one that will actually have a Punisher stand. But I absolutely love this figure. This is a surprise figure for me. I didn't expect it to like it as much as I did. But it's honestly one of my favorite figures of the year. Going down, we continuing with Marvel, and we have Doctor Strange. Now, this honestly will probably be my figure of the year. I love this figure. Everything from the accessories to the details to the posability is just phenomenal. And that face sculpt, I mean, taking a kind of closer look, I mean, that just, that just screams Benedict Cumberbatch. And I mean, just, oh, I, I love this figure. Uh, I've had him in this pose, I think, pretty much since I've gotten him. I may switch it up here. I did a lot of reposing today, uh, but this one I just like so much. And it just, I don't know, it just looks really, really cool. But this figure is absolutely stunning. I love every aspect of it. It's pretty much a near-perfect hot toy. And then coming down here at the bottom, uh, this is actually not a hot toy. This is actually Sideshow Collectibles. And this is the Return of the Jedi Darth Vader. And this was actually my figure of the year last year. My wife got it for me for Christmas last year. And this thing is absolutely amazing. And I, yeah, just everything about all the details, all the robes, all the cloak, the um, little leather that they have for the undersuit. I mean, it just looks absolutely amazing. And then this little light box and the light boxes on the belt actually all light up. There's a little switch on the back, just flip it. And then they all do the blink and everything like it does in the film. Unfortunately, unlike the hot toy Star Wars, uh, the lightsaber does not light up. And actually, I just today put him in a pose holding the lightsaber and doing like the little force push, choke, whatever, whatever you want to think he's doing. Uh, so that is kind of a bummer. Uh, I don't really use the light up features at all with my hot toys, um, but it 
would be kind of nice just to have that option if I wanted to do that. And next up, we have the Civil War Captain America. Again, I got this figure last year, uh, right when it came out from Sideshow. I get most of my collectibles through Sideshow. One, I absolutely love the reward points. Um, their customer service is fantastic. You seem to get the figures a lot sooner than a lot of the other toy websites out there just because they have to go through Sideshow first since it is the official distributor for Hot Toys in the U.S. The only thing that kind of sucks with them is their shipping because they've raised it to 20 bucks. Uh, but taking a look at this Captain America, I think, honestly, I've seen most of the Captain America since the first Avengers one, and I think this one is by far my favorite. I think it's the best head sculpt, um, especially with the unmasked version, which I actually took off a figure not too long ago and put the mass version on. And I'm thinking I might change it to the aggressive, angry face. I don't know. And also what I really like is this actually has the actual bands here that actually clip in. So I think it holds a little bit better. Whereas the Age of Ultron one was an actual magnet. Um, so I heard a lot of, like if you barely touched it, it kind of fell off in a lot of those type of things. So this one just seems a little bit more sturdy. Really happy I picked that one up. Coming down, we have the Age of Ultron Mark 45, I believe. Yeah, 45. And I absolutely love this figure. This is probably my favorite Iron Man armor, um, even, even more so than the 46. The only thing I really liked about the 46 was like the 28 LED lights or something like that. But like I said, I really don't do the light features a whole lot, other than like when I have like a big party or something coming over, I'll usually light them up just to try to impress some people. Uh, but uh, so yeah, I absolutely love the detailing on the suit. I really like the kind of tone of red and gold that they have. Um, some of the other figures just seem a little bit too bright red in my opinion. I think this one's more of kind of a, a little bit toned down. Um, and I just, I really love the use of the gold and the silver and just how good this figure looks. And yeah, so, and then maybe the little Ultron that comes with uh, this figure. And he's a lot of fun to pose. Uh, he is the die cast metal, so he's got a really, really good weight to him. Uh, yeah, he's one of my favorite figures in the collection. I'm not even that big of an Iron Man fan, but had to have at least one and really glad I went with the 45. Coming down, we have again from Civil War, the Winter Soldier, Bucky Barnes. Now, I am super excited about this figure. Winter Soldier is one of my favorite characters. The Civil War, or not Civil War, the Captain America. Winter Soldier is still my favorite Marvel movie. And I think this is just a fantastic representation of that character. Um, all the detailing. I mean, there's not a whole lot going on like with his suit and things like that. It's just basically a black vet leather vest and just combat pants and boots. And yeah, not a whole lot going on, but they definitely got all the details right. And he's just a lot of fun to pose. I think the sculpt looks dead on to Sebastian Stan. And yeah, super happy with that. Love, absolutely love the chrome arm here. I just how shiny and how reflective it is. It just seems a lot more metallic than what the Winter Soldier, uh, Winter Soldier figure looked like. The only thing I wish that I would have would be the head sculpt that has the actual like uh, mask that he wore in Winter Soldier because I really like that look but uh, unfortunately did not come with the Civil War one, but this is just a fantastic representation of this character and super happy to have it in my collection. And coming down, we have another Star Wars figure, and this is the Han Solo from A New Hope. I actually have a little bit more of a detailed video I'm gonna be posting here soon uh, of this figure, but I'm super happy to get this. It's actually kind of funny how I got it. I was wanting to beef up my Star Wars collection just a little bit, and so I wanted to get all the characters from the original trilogies and uh, I went ahead and looked on Sideshow and the original Han Solo was on waitlist. And so I'm like, dang it, I probably missed my opportunity to get him. And so I told the wife, I was like, all right, I'm just gonna put my name on the waitlist. I probably won't be able to get it, but I at least want to say I tried. And then within 24 hours, I had already gotten an email from Sideshow saying, hey, we found one for you. Here you go, it's gonna be shipping in two days. Uh, so really happy to get it, even though I kind of wasn't planning for it. And it was kind of an impulse buy, but uh, absolutely love this figure. It's really, really cool. And then now coming to probably my favorite display case. And if you can't tell, Batman is my favorite character, him and Spider-Man. And these are my Batman v Superman hot toys. So here on the left, we actually have the black chrome sideshow exclusive variant of the armored Batman. I actually went with this one because I liked 
the prototype images uh, a lot more because it looked kind of more like the rain-soaked armor that we saw in the movie. Unfortunately, when it actually came, it's nowhere near as shiny and as chrome-like as the prototype images showed. I'm still extremely happy with the figure. I still love the darker black uh, armor instead of the gray. I think it looks absolutely fantastic, especially in the right lighting. Um, I was just a little bit bummed it wasn't as shiny is what they kind of let it on to be but this is just a massive impressive figure um it was definitely one of my favorites of last year uh the eyes do light up i thought that was a really cool touch uh and then everything all the armor plating all like the battle damage and everything just looks absolutely fantastic i know they just released another armored batman that actually has like the damage chest plate and then the uh a little bit of the mask missing uh, i'm not gonna buy another one i want enough of this particular version of this figure for me uh but that one does look really cool as well coming over here we just have the normal batman from batman v superman and this was honestly one of my another one of my favorite figures of last year uh this is probably my favorite or was my favorite batman up until one i got that i'll show you here in just a couple and uh but no this is this is an absolutely brilliant figure the suit and all the muscles and all the details that they put in are fantastic i think the face sculpt especially like that like just chin and everything just screams ben affleck love the eyes just everything about this figure is fantastic a really good posability for how tight the suit is i've been really really cautious with this guy i haven't really kept him in any really sort of dynamic poses until today i went ahead and posed him this way i kept him basically in like that museum pose just because i was afraid of stretching out the suit and all that but i haven't really heard of any reports of the suit stretching so i'm like all right well it's been a year over a year now this figure has been out i'm sure if someone was having issues they i'd see it on one of the forums i frequent uh but so i'm gonna at least go ahead for a week or two probably keep him in this pose and then probably move him back and hopefully don't damage the suit because these things are expensive uh coming down here we have my first ever hot toy this is the michael keaton batman returns now batman returns is still my favorite batman movie i know it's campy i know it's cheesy i know it's horribly acted i don't care I love that movie. Um, I think it's probably the best kind of combo between the dark Batman and the lighthearted, like 66 series, uh, kind of campy Batman. And I just absolutely love the, I just absolutely love the movie. Uh, so yeah, this was a figure that I definitely wanted. And I mean, just take a look, I mean, that just is, that is just a wonderful sculpt of Keaton. And then coming down, I mean, just the suit is, the only bad thing about this one is there's very, 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 very limited posability because this is one solid rubber suit. But, I mean, let's be honest, like in the movie, Keaton couldn't move all that well. So I feel like that's pretty accurate to how the film was. Uh, but yeah, this was my first hot toy. Uh, went into a Comic-Con and told the wife, it was right around my birthday, I was like, alright, I want at least one hot toy in my collection. And this is the one I want, it was right when this released. And I was like, all right, if anybody has this con, anybody at the con has this near face value or retail, I was like, I'm going to buy it. First booth I walked into at the convention had it for retail. Uh, so I took that as a sign, bought it, and then haven't looked back. Uh, Coming, this is actually my newest hot toy. I just got this last week, and this is the Batman Arkham Knight Batman from the video game. Uh, and this honestly may be my new favorite Batman hot toy. I absolutely love this figure. I love this armor. This is probably my favorite armor of all my, of all Batman armors. Uh, this is just one that the design work is amazing and hot toys just absolutely nailed all the details. I uh, just love this figure. Love that face sculpt. I know it doesn't look like an actor or anything like that, but it just looks so imposing. Um, this figure is massive. And it doesn't have the greatest posability, and I'm really worried about the suit stretching out. Uh, so he's not going to leave this kind of standard museum pose. But I think he looks pretty cool this way. Uh, but yeah, there are some issues that I have with it. Just kind of fearing uh, damage as far as the undersuit is concerned. But I'm just going to keep him in this pose, so super happy with him. And we also have Kylo Ren from Star Wars. The Force Awakens. Uh, now, this actually I won through Sideshow. Uh, I won this through their spooktacular uh, event that they do in Halloween. I had to go buy coffee and hold up a sign saying that my soul had been borrowed for spooktacular. Uh, and then my prize was this Kylo Ren hot toy. 
Uh, I absolutely love Kylo Ren. I know a lot of people will think he's kind of whiny and things like that, but that's what I liked about him because he was like an unhinged teenager. He never knew what he was going to do. He was very dramatic, and I think that makes him a lot more dangerous and a lot more imposing than someone who's calm, cool, collected like Darth Vader or anyone like that. So that is my personal opinion. I love Kylo. Can't wait to see him here in The Last Jedi. And I absolutely love this hot toy. Um, not a whole lot of accessories, but I mean, just the detailing here on the mask, like all the robes, all the cloaks, the lightsaber looks amazing. Now this one does actually light up, which is really cool. Like I said, I don't really use the feature, but it is there. And yeah, just absolutely love this Kylo Ren. All right, now I'm also a massive original art collector. And so I'm gonna show you a couple of these little pieces as well as the rest of my collection. Uh, first one up, this is actually from Deadpool and the Mercs for Money, I think issue six, page one. Um, it was drawn by Brian Lovell, did all the art on the issue. And I saw him at a con and he had this page and I thought it was absolutely amazing because not only is it Deadpool, it is Deadpool playing with action figures. And I was like, how perfect is that for me? So this is an awesome page, super happy I have the original and this will always be cherished in my collection. Uh, coming down, it's just a Daredevil sketch that I got at another convention from Sean Forney. He, uh, amazing artist, really nice guy. Him and his wife are fantastic at every con I go to. I always go up, talk to them. They're just fantastic people, and I absolutely love this Daredevil sketch they did for me. And speaking of Daredevil, here's my little Daredevil collection. So we have the Hot Topic exclusive red suit, have the original suit from the Netflix series, uh, season two, have the Walgreens exclusive comic book Punisher and then have the Netflix Punisher. And then as far as Legends, I have the Netflix Punisher, the Bullseye, Netflix Daredevil, and then the Walgreens exclusive first appearance. And coming up here is my Spider-Man uh, little shrine. And if you can't tell, spider Man's one of my favorite characters. I think I already said that. Uh, but yeah, so have this Titans, I believe it is. Actually, a coworker <laughs> bought that for me. I was like searching every single day for the uh, black suit Spider-Man pop and the Green Goblin at Walgreens. And one of my coworkers who always like to kind of give me a hard time about my figures, he's like, well, what are you looking for? And I was like, well, it's a Spider-Man figure. It's this little guy with a big head and it's $9.99. And he went out and he's like, well, this was not, it's a Spider-Man, this is $9.99, take it. <laughs> so he bought that for me. Absolutely love it. Uh, there's a 12 inch Marvel Legends Spider-Man. And then kind of coming up here, we have the Play Arts Kai Spider-Man. I'm not, a, I personally not a big fan of Play Arts Kai, but I love what they do with Spider-Man. I just absolutely love this figure. I think he looks so cool. I mean, just all the little kind of design work that they put into him. All that like kind of like really cool like shading they did with the blue, how it kind of molds into like the darker shades. It just looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, I had the Marvel Legends Venom, and then honestly, probably one of my favorite favorite figures in my entire collection is this Play Arts Kai Venom. This thing is just absolutely brilliantly sculpted. The paintwork is unbelievable. I mean, I don't know how well it's showing, but you get that like amazing like blue that then like, like kind of morphs into that black. You get all that purple. I mean, oh, it's just, I love this figure. I mean, just look at all that detail work there on the mouth. This thing is just, oh, stunning. Um, this is probably, this is definitely in my top two uh, figures in my entire collection. I love this guy. Uh, I have the Ben Riley Spider-Man Legend. Have the Black Suit Spider-Man Legend. Going over here, I'm I'm a little bit more. I've just gotten to Legends probably the last six months. Um, I've always been more of a select person, uh, and I have the Disney Store exclusive. I believe it's the Spectacular Spider-Man. I think that's what they called it. Uh, this is the Amazing Spider-Man Two Andrew Garfield Select. Have the Venom Select, Carnage Select, and then I absolutely love this Green Goblin Select. I uh, love that little base that he comes with. As far as pops, have the Walgreens exclusive Superior Spider-Man, the Walmart exclusive Unmasked Homemade Suit. Got the Walgreens exclusive Venom, just a standard Spidey. Oh, and then that's the other head sculpt that comes with the Play Arts Kai Venom. Uh, had the Black Suit Spider-Man, have a little, was that, pint size hero, Anti-Venom. Got the Green Goblin. Uh, this was like a little pencil eraser that someone gave us in a... Uh, White elephant gift that we actually had at a little Christmas party a couple weeks ago, and the Taskmaster uh, pop. And then coming up here on the Spider Man, I actually have some artwork. Uh, now, this isn't original, this is an actual print. Uh, if I can get that to focus, 
Uh, it's actually Neil Adams, um, and he signed it for me there. Uh, he's one of my favorite artists. Uh, I love what he did with Batman, but I really like what he did with Spider-Man, especially this print. This was the cover for uh, one of the Marvel Now variants. Um, so I thought that was amazing. Coming over here, we get another Brian Level piece. He's the same artist that did the Deadpool uh, page that I have. Uh, this was one of the first commissions I ever did, one of the first sketches I ever got, and this was a Venom by Brian, and I absolutely love this thing. He just made him so monstrous. Absolutely love it. Uh, this is actually another uh, piece, original piece that I got from Sean Fournier, who did that Daredevil, uh, Spider-Man, Greek Goblin. Absolutely love this one as well. Um, and then this was actually Jeremy Ward. He was at a convention I went to and just had to sit in his booth and I absolutely loved it. So I went ahead and picked it up from him. Uh, and then this is one of my definite kind of prize possessions. Uh, this is Amazing Spider-Man uh, number 200. And obviously is signed by Stan Lee. Met him at the Cincinnati Comic Expo, had him sign this. And this was the only book uh, that I actually had that he actually wrote uh, at least a little bit of it uh, and I wanted something that he actually worked on didn't want him just to have him sign something random uh, so super excited I was able to get him to sign that for me and then kind of coming down here to some random figures we have my little Deadpool shrine a couple little pops that's the Marvel Select Deadpool uh, over here have some more Marvel Selects have the I think it was the Avenging Hawkeye uh, the movie Ant-Man and the uh, Age of Ultron Thor uh, as well as their kind of representative pops and yeah go down here have a couple little uh x-men guys have magneto he's one of my favorite villains so i really wanted his select really happy i got that have his pop and then just have a couple logans uh it's the unmasked select the uh, old man logan legend and old man logan pop and then over here my little hulk collection that is the age of ultron hulk select uh, with the Thor Gladiator pop and then the Age of Ultron pop as well. And it's kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can move these out of the way. Uh, but I actually, this select here is actually signed by Mark Ruffalo. Um, it's really hard to see there, but it was signed by Mark Ruffalo. It says Hulk Smash. Uh, and then he signed it. I actually won that through Midtown Comics. He used to have a podcast. And they were giving that away and all you had to do is sign or call in. Uh, give your best Hulk impression. I did. I won. Uh, I was able to get that. So super happy that I was able to get something signed by Mark Ruffalo. Uh, coming up here, we have the Age of Ultron uh, door. And then the Age of Ultron uh, pop vinyl. I think I got that door in one of the uh, Marvel Collector Corps boxes. And then try to get all the uh, Age of Ultron pops. So had to get Ultron. Uh, this is the Peter Parker... Um, unmask Spider-Man pop. Uh, that's probably the one that I have that's worth the most. Um, and then I have the World War II Captain America and then the crossbones from Civil War. And then, uh, this was actually a Stretch Armstrong from when they released it last year. Uh, our church that we attend, uh, they know that I love collecting figures and our pastor was using it for the Christmas Eve service. And after it was all over, he walked up to me and was like, hey, add this to your collection. And he gave it to me. And so that is proudly displayed here in my collection. Uh, moving over to the Batman side of things, we have the Batman v Superman Batman Pop. Have the, I think that was the San Diego Comic Con exclusive, uh, Imposter Joker. Um, same figure, just a paint, different paint job, but I absolutely love it. And then we have the little tombstone statue that I got when I pre ordered the uh, collector's edition of Arkham Knight. Over here we have the Mattel Barbie, I think it's, it's not the Black Series, Collector Series, maybe it's the Black Series. I don't remember what series it's called, but they do a little kind of, I don't know, like higher, not higher end, uh, I think it's only like 30 or $40, but a uh, Collector Series of the superheroes they did for Batman v Superman. So I picked up the Batman, I actually kind of like the figure for what it is. Uh, I mean, it's definitely not a hot toy or anything like that, but it doesn't look half bad. Um, over here real quick, that's the Play Archive Batman. This is my, I, I hate this figure. I'm just going to be super honest with you. The detailing, the, uh, the proportions, like just the fact that this is like one solid, like heavy cape. He can't stand. He has to be leaning up against the wall. I just don't like this figure at all, but it's a Batman figure. So I'm going to keep him and yeah. So coming over here, I believe this, this is the Mayfex Batman 2.0, uh, from the Dark Knight, I believe. 
yeah, I think that's what that one's from. Uh, really love this figure. Great posability uh, for only being a 1 12th uh, scale figure. Ton of detail, ton of accessories that he came with. Really, really like this figure. Uh, moving over here, I think this was a Mezco kind of little thing. I bought a half price books for like two bucks, uh, but still cool nonetheless. We have the animated series Joker, as well as the Greg Capullo Joker from Endgame. Uh, I'm a huge Greg Capullo fan, so I try to get all the figures from him, and that is one of my favorite Joker designs. And, I'm, and who doesn't love the Joker from the animated series? Have the Batman Returns Catwoman right there. Uh, have the black chrome Batman uh, from the New York convention, or the, uh, yeah, I believe it was the uh, New York Comic Con. Uh, had to go to Barnes and Noble and yeah, I was able to get that. Uh, Greg Capullo, New 52 Batman, have the animated series Batman, and again, another Arkham Knight. That one's from DC Collectibles. Coming down here, we have the Arkham Knight Pop. We have the Dark Knight Returns uh, Blue Suit Batman, the Unmasked Armored Batman. This was a Hot Topic exclusive Steampunk Batman Pop. Uh, that one's really cool. I just like the detail work on that. I wish they'd do like some more kind of original pops, but... Yeah, we'll see. Uh, this is the, I think, DC Universe. It isn't the actual Batman Returns or Batman 89 one from GameStop. This is the closest thing I could find for a reasonable price, uh, but I wanted kind of a pop to represent Batman Returns. I think that does a good job. Uh, have a Deathstroke right there. Have the 8-Bit Batman from New York Comic Con and GameStop, and then have the Justice League Tactical Suit Batman, and then just have a couple like the Bat Tumbler, and then the Bat Cycle from the Dark Knight uh, Trilogy. It actually came with a box set that I bought uh, that came with all sorts of little collectibles like this, so I thought they looked cool in my little display. And then coming up here to my original Batman art, this was actually done by a gentleman named Lee Zofer. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I uh, met him at a convention and loved this uh, piece. So I went ahead and bought it from him. And he actually uses this for a lot of prints. So you may have seen the print, but I actually own the original. Um, absolutely love this piece. Uh, Daryl Banks did this for me this year, early this year. Uh, two of my favorite characters, Spawn and Batman. And it was really cool. I mean, his detail work is unbelievable. And this just came out astounding and it was really kind of cool he was telling me that i think this is only the second time ever in his career he's been uh, asked to do spawn uh so he was really happy to do a character that he doesn't normally get to do um i just think that came out amazing uh this is v ken marion he did this amazing joker for me i'm debating whether or not i want to get it inked from somebody i don't know the pencils just look so freaking fantastic and i love that he just looks like kind of like almost like a victorian type air joker joker and I just, I love the way it looks. Uh, and this is one of my favorite sketches in my collection. This is Gavin Smith. Love this Batman piece. I mean, just how much ink. I mean, kind of look here. He actually used white out there. Um, and just the energy that this piece emits is just astounding. Uh, coming up here, we have another Brian Level piece. You're going to hear that name a lot. Uh, I absolutely love his work. Uh, and he did this Batman and Bane commission for me. And this is probably... I don't know. I don't want to say this is my favorite piece. I don't know. It may be. Um, he actually did the art on Batman issue number 52, the last issue for uh, Batman the New 52. And so that looks absolutely amazing. I, I just love this piece. I can stare at it all day. Uh, next up we have from one of my favorite current Batman artists, Jason Fabek. Uh, I was able, lucky enough, to be able to get a head sketch from him at the Cincinnati Comic Expo a couple years ago, and yeah, he is he is unreal. Um, his work reminds me so much of one of my other favorite artists, David Finch, uh, that it's, yeah, it's scary, like, kind of how amazing his work is, um, and this is definitely, honestly, my favorite piece that I own um, just because of the artist, and I mean, it's not definitely not the most, uh, you know, when you look at how much is going on here compared to this, but this is just stunning that I'm able to own an original piece from Jason Fabic. Uh, next, I actually got this at the Cincinnati Comic Expo. This is just a little head sketch from Jay Lee. Uh, he was at the Cincinnati Comic Expo and I love his dark style and he was just an artist that I really, really wanted to get an original piece from. So I was able to get this little kind of profile uh, sketch from him. Super happy to have it in my collection. And last but not least, in my Batman, we have a bunch, well, 
This is a print from Greg Capullo, and it's actually signed by Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder. They did this for me at the uh, Cincinnati Comic Expo this year. I did like a little experience where I got to meet both of them. Uh, they gave me this print and signed it for me. Uh, and then next up is my little Spawn collection. I had two old school Spawn figures and then the uh, McFarlane color top. Uh, most recent spawn. I know there's a commando one out now. Fortunately, I haven't been able to get him yet. I hope to get him soon. Fortunately, I don't have most of the ones that I had as a kid. Those are long gone now. But yeah, absolutely love spawn and definitely trying to up my collection just a little bit more. And then coming over here, we got a little bit more Marvel. So these are a couple of the Marvel Select Captain Americas. A uh, ton of Captain America pops. And then over here, we have a bunch of Iron Man selects. This was actually the first ever uh, select I bought. That was actually the figure that got me back into figure collecting like two, two and a half years ago. Um, so yeah, so yeah, really happy I got that one. Uh, and then just a bunch of more pops. And this is actually probably my favorite Iron Man pop. I love that little Hulkbuster. The detail and just how massive he is is really, really freaking cool. Uh, coming down here, just a couple more selects we have. The Falcon from Winter Soldier, and the Winter Soldier from Civil War. Uh, a couple of pops down here. It's the rest of the Civil War pops. So we have Winter Soldier, Falcon, Scarlet Witch, Black Panther, Scar or no, not Scarlet Witch, <laughs> Black Widow, and Vision. And this is the Vision from Target. That was the exclusive. That was like the uh, translucent morphing Vision. So really happy I was able to find him. And then we have a couple Doctor Strange. There's the uh, Marvel Select Doctor Strange, and the Ancient One, and the... Doctor Strange pop from the movie. And just showing you my little holiday collection I have set up. Here is my Chase Grinch that I just got. I actually ordered that from Amazon and they sent me the Chase. Have the Santa Jack Skellington. I uh, have, I think this is Elsa from Frozen. Uh, one of my coworkers actually bought, I hate giving blood. And he <laughs> bought me this as kind of a joke. He said that he was going to get me a toy if I was good and gave blood. And then, uh, then he gave me this one saying that since I was being such a girl about it, I got a girl toy. Uh, so yeah, I just play this proudly. Uh, absolutely awesome. I'm really thankful he got that for me. And then I have the Clark Griswold from Christmas Vacation, which is one of my all-time favorite movies. Since I am a hockey fan and figure fan, of course I have the uh, Columbus Blue Jacket Rick Nash from McFarland Figures. And then last but not least, my work in progress. This is actually my office. Uh, this is going to be kind of my little Star Wars sanctuary. So all the hot toys I showed you that are down in the basement are going to move up here. I uh, already moved up my posters. Fortunately, my Empire Strikes Back frame is busted. So I have the nail for it. But going to have to get a new frame and hang all those. Going to get some of the uh, Detolfs. I think they're, I don't know how you pronounce it. But the glass cases I have downstairs. I'm going to put all my hot toys, uh, Star Wars hot toys up here, light it up like I have downstairs, and then have a couple of the little kind of cube shelves that I have down there as well. Um, what I did for the meantime is just kind of set up this old bookcase we have uh, with all my Star Wars stuff. So a couple of the, these are the Elite series from the Disney store. These are the die cast metal ones. I never really got into the Black series all that much. And then coming down here, just some more pops, more pops. A uh, little Jabba set up there. And then these are some three quarter inch. A uh, really good friend of mine, Lance, he was actually found a bunch of these. And was like, hey, you want them? I'm like, heck yeah, I want them. So I went ahead and displayed all of them. I think they look absolutely fantastic. Uh, and then the Force Awakens elites and pops that I have. So that's my little Star Wars setup for now. Um, I think it looks pretty cool, but gonna actually like make it a lot nicer. Once I actually have time, this is my little light box that I made. This is where I do all my little reviews and the computer I edit them on and have a couple pieces of original art up here as well. I'm going to use this wall for all my indie book original art. So this is actually a drawing of Maria from Deadly Class. That is my all time favorite comic. I love it. It's still running. Phenomenal. Rick Remender is unbelievable. Um, Brian Lovell actually did a cover for it. Uh, so I had him do this Maria for me and it looks, I, oh, I love it. Absolutely love Brian's work. And this is no exception coming over here. This is another Gavin Smith. And this is actually from rumble. Uh, this is Rathrak and then a demon. I basically told him go make, I love his monster design. So I was like, just make an awesome monster. And man, did he come through. Uh, Rumble's another amazing comic book. They're on a little, a little bit of a hiatus right now, uh, but this is definitely a book you should check out. 
And then this is an original page from one of my favorite comic series called Chew. Um, and this was actually the first page that I ever laughed out loud at, at this that, through this series. Um, and as soon as I saw that Rob Gilroy, the artist, had this available, I was like, I have to buy it. So I went up to C2E2 and bought it from him. And yeah, I absolutely love this scene. You got your director, Appleby, yelling at uh, Tony and John. It's just a fantastic scene. Uh, if you re read the series, it's, it's so insane, so crazy, so funny. Just comics at its best. Um, the series is now over, but you can find the entire trades. Uh, I think there's 12 issues or 12 volumes of the trade, um, or you can get it into six hardcovers. Can't recommend it enough. It's just a, it's 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 what makes comics fun, and super excited to have that original page. So yeah, that does it for my little collection tour. Um, well, thank you guys for checking out these videos. It really does mean a lot that you guys are watching. I'm hoping you enjoyed my little tour of my small but growing collection. And yeah, really excited to be able to share all this with you guys. Uh, look for a ton more Hot Toy reviews. I look for uh, actually going to have probably a Legend 2-pack I just bought today. I'm going to have that up hopefully within the next couple days. And yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys later. See ya.